السلام علیکم سعیدی وعلیکم السلام و رحمت اللہ سعیدی how to hold tight to the rope of Allah Did you make that up just now? <laughs> like when in doubt, come up with this kind of question, you say, yeah. That, whoever asked that, you got to buy three meditation books. That's the whole time you got to ask me to hold them. You have to buy the meditation book, one for yourself and, and two for a gift for other people. So alhamdulillah, the, the rope of Allah is the tariqah and how to hold the rope of Allah is is to hold tight to the tariqah and build the relationship with the shaykh. That, that's uh, the opening of help me at nurmuhammad.com is a, is a tremendous opening for people to communicate and to get the response that they need, not the response that they want and to open a line of communication. That you have like a mass of let's say 4,000 people if you look at the audience There's an audience of around two to three hundred people, as soon as this broadcast closes it jumps to two thousand people because of the different times and about a day later it's up to four thousand. So four thousand people and they're like an audience just sort of ooh, like an ocean and they're looking at this one shaykh. This has to be a, a, a two-way relationship in which you make yourself to be known, make yourself to participate. Don't lose yourself and become nothing in that ocean and not identified, not participate, like a shadow. This is not the objective of this relationship and this relationship requires the student to participate, to comment, to be known that there… we've described before, you know being nothing is when you face dunya. But in this reality your social marking and your social… what did we call it? The social rank in the heavens is important. Not the social rank in dunya where people have to like your posts and like your comments, and it's not, that's not important at all. But the most important is that unzur khalana wa ishfalana is that we're asking Prophet that, please keep your gaze, your holy nazar upon me because from those Divine eyes comes the fires and emanations of Divinely grace. So when the saintly souls and prophetic souls they look to us there's a Divine grace coming from their eternal eyes and their soul. Our life is how to achieve that grace. So that grace is by good deeds and good actions. So the interaction with the shaykh, the interaction with the tariqah is important. So by opening the email It took this crowd of… imagine like an ocean of just a shadow of people out there, three to four thousand people looking at a shaykh's teaching and there's like a lecture hall, imagine back at school there's a four thousand people in the audience and the shaykh is just teaching. The email opens an opportunity for people to begin to identify themselves with the shaykh. So they email that this is so and so, I'm watching your, your talks. Alhamdulillah, I'd like to thank you and just anything to identify themselves that I am out here. I'm not hiding in the shadows but I'm actually present, I'm watching you, I'm watching you for a year now, three years now and, and I'm, I'm coming across these subjects, I'm studying meditation. If you had a question at that time about how to meditate then we send you the links because the guys have already put 20 responses already programmed in G Suite so that they help you with all the hyperlinks. But the most important aspect is to pop up so that you're out of that shadow. And then as soon as you participate then they're seeing you. Then you go to the other websites, you share the links on social media, they see it, the shaykh sees it. Means your social profile with the heavenly realm is now rising, oh this one, okay we see them here, we see them there, we see them this. In every aspect that they're participating, they're supporting the shaykh, they're participating on the platforms, as a result we gain the nazar because that's exactly what the shaykh is doing. He's doing the exact same thing, he's doing all of these events and then keeps asking for the nazar of the heavens and the awliya that are supporting him, that please keep your nazar on us, that you be satisfied and happy with us, resolve our issues and the issues of our community, look at our good deeds. 
So they're trying to also improve their social index within the heavens so that their profile is continuously under the nazar of Prophet That's why I'm saying if, if you understood the system you would understand. So imagine there's a shaykh or any person who's teaching doesn't really gather that many people to do good deeds, just talks to them, keep talking to them, keep talking to them. But what got the nazar? Well all of a sudden the other shaykh appears and he has 300 qurbans now being sacrificed. And they're all over the world and they're being sacrificed in his shaykh's names. So his shaykh's names are now going everywhere just like he's been taught. And 300, if I said one was amazing and one is immense, then now they brought 300 to Prophet Say, Ya Sayyidi, Ya Rasul Kareem, please for the sake of these that these people put we're bringing this home and asking please our jama'at to be dressed, our students to be blessed, our students' difficulties to be taken away, let them to prosper. Because many came and they asked to be a student and other people said, well you have to learn meditation, just do like this, do like that. It's okay, let anybody say what they want but look what these good deeds will open for these students. That's what, what's going to happen when people say, oh no I feel energy and other people say, I don't feel anything, I'm following and I'm, not, I'm following this one and I'm following that one, I don't feel anything. And I don't think anybody who follows this way, follows our teaching can come back and say, I don't feel anything. You should feel an immense amount of energy, an immense flow of energy and that you're participating in all of these deeds. And that's why we keep announcing them and say, look this 600 wells are being presented to Prophet showing that this curriculum, this way we're, pr we're producing results. And that's what's gaining the nazar. So that's our social index that we teach the students. That's when you say, oh look at the shaykh, he's got 600 wells, got 300 qurbans on this Eid, he's doing all these different charities on, on different countries and he's presenting those to his shaykhs and to Prophet And that's not even the, the knowledges that are being disseminated for the sake of Sayyidina Mahdi's arrival. That there has to be a certain caliber of knowledges that come out to elevate the souls of people, the, the knowledge of, of realities upon the people so that their soul is growing. So that's also something that is, is very rare. As a result those are getting the nazar of the heavens. So our whole life is about what we can do to get the attention. And the attention is a flowing kawthar of ridha and satisfaction. Imagine Prophet is gazing at the soul with happiness because the shaykh is presenting the qurbans with all his jama'ah because you be with who you are, with who you love. Their souls are attached to him. As he's attached to the one he loves that's all being presented in the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad With that ridha and satisfaction those lights dress the souls, bless the souls, grant what they're all asking for, individually what they're asking for. Everybody's being blessed by it. That's, that's the reality. So that's what they're trying to instill on an individual basis is follow your shaykh and follow the example of your shaykh. Your shaykh is doing something, is active with something, you be active, do something, be active participate so that you're under the nazar of the shaykh, that the shaykh is, is seeing your name everywhere, is seeing your comments, seeing that you're struggling to, to, to participate and to be active and to be noticed by them, not by people. It's not about posting articles and, and writing and trying to make yourself a co-shaykh, they don't need any co-pilots. You want to be noticed by the shaykh in a good way, not a bad way. And the good way is the support and all the things that we describe. It's not by trying to be a co-shaykh and co-pilot and then go out and now try to produce some articles. Then you're competing with the shaykh and actually you start to reverse your polarity and you begin to repel from the shaykh. So this is about this way of holding tight to the rope, participating in the way he's asked you to participate and then to make yourselves to be recognized by them as a supporter of his mission. 
So alhamdulillah is very, very powerful, that's the exact system in which he's operating. All the other shaykhs they can complain all they want but if they're not bringing it up to the table then they, they don't have anything to talk about. You can complain and shaykhs are like that too, they can all sit on a couch and complain. Why is the one like that? Why is this one like that? But if you don't bring it to the table and you don't have any actions to present to Prophet it's all talk and talk is cheap and many people talk from a couch, what we call couch people. They just say, oh, do, 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 do. But if you're not doing anything and that's what's important is that the action, the faith in action and that's where it gets results, that's where Prophet nazar, rida, satisfaction. Then those du'as are going out, Divinely Grace is dressing and many people's life issues are being resolved. Mushkil gusha that they provided an action and Allah un, untied a difficulty from their lives. And life is a continuous battle. Don't think that this way everyone's going to tell you, oh mashaAllah you follow him, congratulations, good luck, enter paradise. But every step of the way somebody's going to come and you don't need to do that, you don't need to follow him, you don't need to do because everybody has a shaitan inside of them. So that's given, this life is like a football game, you got the ball, you're supposed to go for the, the goal and pay attention to no one, just you go for the goal and keep going and that's the tariqah. That everything comes to you, don't do it, stop, why you have to do this, why you have to meditate, why you have to give a qurban, why you have to give a qurban, why you have to do these things. So it's just, it's non-stop, life is a continuous struggle and success are those whom struggle and istiqamu fi tariqah, that their, their tariqah is like a two legs of concrete into the cement, they don't move from it, they continue their path regardless. And they don't listen to anyone's comments because they know everybody has something negative to say because it's hasad. You think anybody's happy when, when you're doing good and so, mashaAllah you guys did that much? No, they come say, why you have to do it? You don't have to do that. You don't have to have a turban, you don't have to have a beard, you don't have to do these things. So alhamdulillah, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum shaykh. <laughs> Are there souls that have more than seven names and can we trust the names given before joining tariqah? Souls that have more than seven names, you may have uh, what they call kunya, like a known by, those may not be the names. So people may be known by something and like a, like a, not a surname, I don't know what it would be called, just something that you'd go by but it's not necessarily a name from your seven realities. So these are seven names, seven paradises and that name in that paradise is responsible for dressing you. So you have to get to know your Lord. These names are lords over you. And you have a name and a, and a rabb from Allah you have a name of Allah's names that governs you. So all of these are, are realities for the one whom seeks to know themselves. And whatever you think the name is you write it in your book and you keep making your meditation connection and asking, Ya Rabbi that I'm connecting with my shaykh, asking my shaykh please say dress me from the fires of these names, this reality, I want to get to know myself and then keep trying. Says, you know, is my name Abdul Rauf and uh, is this name for me to understand how to be merciful, how to be kind and then meditate and contemplate? Ya Rabbi is, is my name, if my name is from Abdul Rauf then a servant of Sifat al Rauf and then grant me from this reality, grant me from this dress. So then it's all about trying to understand myself, to connect with that reality, connect with the shaykh. And anything that comes as inspiration then write them. But don't obsess over it because then you're losing your target. Remember you're, you're supposed to go from A and get to Z. Everything along this path shaitan can use as a distraction. 
So that all day long you're sitting and meditating, what's my name? What's my name? What's my name? Why do you keep doing that? What is… what do you think you're going to get? Then you have to analyze yourself, why, why am I asking for all my names? You think you're, you're getting like a lottery ticket or something else is coming to you that you, you were expecting? So these are something of a subtle reality that you're asking Allah I just want to, to know myself Ya Rabbi. But I should know also my bad character that's probably more important so I'll focus on that. I'll focus on why I was angry yesterday and why I did like this today. And then I should be focusing on making my connection to my shaykh that I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing and see myself vanishing and that his fires is dressing me and it's becoming like fire onto me, like lightning onto me because I'm supposed to be vanishing. It's not supposed to be trying to find myself like I'm going to get a superpower and then these are just then become the ego. So every aspect shaitan can take something in this journey and distract somebody completely. They start to sit and, and, and imagine that they're seeing things, oh I just saw I got a job by yesterday, oh shaitan says, you like that kind of stuff? And then every time you sit and meditate, here we go, now crown is coming, oh look big jewels, you deserve jewels. And before you know it instead of becoming nothing, you look down and say, oh my gosh in my meditation I got a jubba, I got crowns, I got… I, I got the diamonds, I got jewels in front of me but that wasn't the purpose. So shaitan then started to fool and fool around with that person. So again every aspect of the, of the, the meditation and tafakkur is I'm nothing, I'm nothing. My nothingness Ya Rabbi dress me from these realities, dress me from what governs me and you spend very little time on that and making the connection asking to be nothing and then to be dressed with the fires and energy from the shaykh. The more you can vanish, the more that energy begin to dress you and you say, well next question is, how do you know that I've been dressed by the shaykh? You know when you vanished and you know when the energy comes, this is not a philosophy class. You get hit, you get lit up, you get heated up in which you feel like you're burning. Many times when they meditate at this level their mouths are all in difficulty because the mouth and the heat in the mouth become so much they have all sorts of sores in the mouth. So you have to learn how to keep yourself cool during this type of energy and not to burn yourself where you physically will burn the body because of the, the amount of energy that's coming onto the body. So you have to cool yourself, put cool things into the mouth and learn how to sort of ventilate the mouth so that you don't heat with a hot mouth and you get all sorts of canker sores within the mouth because you're producing too much heat. So it's very real, it's not that you even have to ask an expression, well how do I know? You'll know when you're on fire. You'll feel it. <coughs> As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, are there any tariqah options for women longing for silent retreats in a sacred container under the tutelage of a teacher? If not, is vipassana retreat an acceptable alternative? Ooh. If not is what? Is the vipassana I retreat. That. Oh, is your mic on? It's on Sayyidi. Can you mic closer? Yeah. If not is vipassana retreat an acceptable alternative? Yeah, th this way and the way that this, this is operating at this point with the ma madad and the fires that they're giving, everyone is safe to operate from home. So this is not something needed to sit a shaykh, the shaykh is able to reach everyone. So they don't need a system where everybody has to come to the shaykh, that was like an old technology. Right now the technology and their, their, their permission, wherever the student is, if they sit and plant themselves in a clean environment and begin to make their tafakkur and contemplation these shaykhs will reach them and as a result all you need is a room to isolate in so that you do it exactly how it was written out. That's why you have to have the timeless reality book, you have to understand the articles for meditation, you sit, connect your heart on nothing, ask for the shaykhs to be present, make sure you're in wudu and begin to connect. 
And as a result of the connection you begin to connect, the energy comes, the energy comes. You don't need to be on a retreat with other people because again you can cross-contaminate the energy. This is such a powerful energy and such a powerful gift from Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah, from Sultanul Awliya Man Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghestani, Man Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani that you don't want to contaminate it with anything, not another group, not another shaykh, not another person. So you go sit in somewhere else and if they have a retreat and they start to talk and your heart gets to connect with them and this one and that one. So what we call is cross-contamination. This is actually a process just to isolate, sit, lock yourself off when you can for like a half an hour, hour, 10 minutes whenever you person can and they meditate or at night everyone's going to sleep, you put everybody to bed and you sit and you connect your heart. And you only need to do that a little bit again because if the energy starts to come you can't sleep the whole night. So you do a little bit, little bit, little bit and begin to feel the opening within the heart. And because of the email and the opening people can communicate, the live broadcast, the question and answers, there's no need. You know it's like telemedicine now. So before they opened telemedicine you had to go to the doctor's office. But after COVID they opened up a permission which is Lao tele tariqa Nobody needs to go anywhere and you don't need to sit with anyone because you're going to get cross-contaminated. You end up in a room and another jama and they say, why do you have to meditate? No, no we never heard this, don't do this. And before you know it the person goes out, oh I got so confused, I sat with these people, I got confused, I got reprogrammed, deprogrammed. So that becomes what we said that humans are the pandemic. And everybody's bad character they throw on somebody. Somebody who's not achieving anything always takes everybody down. So doesn't matter dunya and akhirah, you're doing great things for, for akhirah, you sit with somebody and oh you don't have to do those things because they're not doing it. You don't have to do that because they're not doing it. And as a result they want nobody to do it and they want everyone to drown like they're drowning. So. Best everybody just sit by themselves, go to their room, make their meditation, make the connection and feel that power coming and then when they go out amongst people they don't show anything, don't talk about anything, don't say what you're doing, don't say what your practices are and keep it all to yourself. Allah and Allah open for whom He wants to open. Otherwise then people become jealous of, well why did that happen to you, why did that energy come to you and hasad begins to come and then people get discouraged again and run into difficulty. So alhamdulillah they opened uh, after this COVID reality is uh, tariqah, like telemedicine that you, you connect through emails with the shaykhs, through the live broadcast, ask your questions. If it's a, a question that can be applicable for a live audience then alhamdulillah if not send it by email. At least the communication now is being established. Then follow his system of being supporting, support the source, support the online, support the charities, support the articles and post them so that you are showing your support and participation. As a result then you're under their nazar and then this fires begins to open for the student that's practicing and then they know that who they're locked with. Otherwise they're just sort of all over the place. So again 3,000, 4,000 viewers are coming on. So then imagine how many should be participating and emailing and being active. But there's a vast ocean of those who keep quiet and just sort of continuously observing. But you want to stand up and move forward to be recognized inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa was there any significance of the Georgia Guidestones being destroyed? Yeah, I would imagine there was a tremendous significance that the CERN opened something for these people and they probably don't want any proof of what they're about to do. And for some reason that stone had certain information of what they wanted uh, to do to people. And Mawlana Shaykh had said many times, Sultanul Awliya, that they plan to take away six out of seven people from this earth. And that guidestone said even more that they only wanted 500 million people on earth. 
and they're under a, a philosophy that the earth and because of the environment is uh, too much population. So they want to depopulate the earth, this is Dajjal and uh, yeah. And very famous personalities, their entire family lineages were involved in the concept of depopulating the earth and writing articles to societies based on the earth has too much of a population. So these are the things that they are planning to implement and I think the last thing they want is a stone that has it written. So as a result of something they're trying to open from their portals, they now took that proof down that this is what they want to do to humanity. But uh, these are all signs for people for whom their hearts are open and that Allah they plan and Allah plans better. So as much as they're doing to, to bring about a, a time of chaos and try to speed up the process of chaos, uh, they plan and Allah plans better. That's why it's such an immense opening and a time of awakening for people who wish to open the heavenly kingdom within their heart. And that's why the, these, these are all the same prayers, all the same practices for all those who believe in the oneness of the Divine, the heavenly kingdom must come and God's will must be done and His will must be done as it is in heaven. So means that heavenly guides and heavenly rules must be implemented onto the heart of the believer so that their heart can contain this heavenly kingdom and heavenly power, heavenly energies inshaAllah and open for all those whom they're inspired to improve themselves, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, how does acupuncture affect our energy we are trying to build? Yeah, any anytime we do energy work we have to be careful who's doing the work. So like a finely tuned car that you, you have, if people know like a Ferrari, finely tuned by the Ferrari mechanic and everything is the engine is all tuned, everything is perfected. You take this and go down to the Toyota dealer and say, I, sorry I couldn't go to my Ferrari service, can you fix this for me? And if the guy is very bold he'll say, yes of course I can and he retunes the entire <laughs> engine and destroys your entire car because he tuned it according to what he thinks he knows. But he's not qualified for that level of tuning. So that's the danger with acupressure, acupuncture and uh, acu anything. Anytime a lesser understanding is touching somebody they think everything is wrong. Why is it programmed like this? Because that's way above their programming. So they may deprogram people and reset different energies. So that's the risk that somebody takes when they just go somewhere and say, okay we'll start doing your acupressure and acupuncture and start you know changing my meridians and energies. That, that can be dangerous. So when we come and we meditate, a concept is happening is that you sit and you begin to meditate and you say that, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. Well from Budal, Nujab, Nuqab, Awtadul, Akhyar, uh, Jinni wa Ins, uh, Malaika, there are different categories of spiritual beings that are coming in front of you when you're meditating and you don't see them, most likely you won't feel them, some will feel them because they're very sensitive and they begin to change things. Means they're fixing the latayfs, they're changing, they're cleansing the body so that the soul can have an easy departure in and out because the body is continuously trying to lock like rooting itself to the soul. So there are malaika mutahireen that at night they come for the believer and mutahireen that there's special category of jinn and angels that come every night for certain servants and clean their body like a shell. Hmm. As their body is, is trying and their nafs is trying to root itself to the soul. So in their sleep they may see dark figures all around them and that's not your concern. Don't, don't pay attention to them, don't try to be scared of them, just go to sleep. And their the responsibility is to come and to clean 
so that the body is clean from the soul so that the soul continuously can depart and move free from the body. So means that this high level of programming and they meditate and, and the different categories of awliya may come and begin to calibrate their heart and their lataif. But there's a lot of work being done behind the scenes. So when you go to a, a lesser philosophy and an and a idolatry where they don't believe in the oneness of Allah so yeah you put a lot of danger into going to someone like that. Where they may come across your energy and think it's programmed wrong and start to reprogram things. So the, that's… the body is such a sensitive thing. So that's why I said they gave the example of a car. If you think a car is special then we have to think ourselves as billion times more special. That the way I've been programmed by my shaykhs and, and uh, this connection no, I can't just give myself to anybody, do anything they want to touch me and, and to program and put needles and, and re recharge my energies in different ways. No, so it's very dangerous. Now if you're going for medical and there's a specific medical condition that you're trying to resolve then those are different. They come and they do a pain relief on a specific area, those are generally very precise and that's for a medical reason. They're not just going there and say, okay well fine tune me and tune me up and you need to change all the programming and that can be difficult on spirituality. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, what is the, a secret shortcut to attaining the nazar of awliya Allah Kareem, Muhammadun Nalayim Pak and to start giving in public service for the nazar of awliya Allah when we feel there is a block okay. on us? Oh, I didn't hear that shaykh, sorry. <laughs> Inshallah. <clears throat> what is a secret shortcut to attaining the nazar of awliya Allah Kareem, Muhammad Nalayim Pak and to start giving in public service for the nazar of awliya Allah when we feel there is a block on us? What's the last part? When there is a block on us. How to get a shortcut when there's a block on us? <laughs> now I'm saying this. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, there, 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 there's no shortcut, there's no block on us. So the, the, the only block is the one that we put upon ourselves, right? And everybody has a finger, they put the <laughs> finger on the article, they press share, put it onto Facebook, take something from the store press share, put it on Facebook, put it on uh, Instagram, put it on now on TikTok, we have an active TikTok page. Take the TikTok talks on Muhammadan way, take it, share it, post it on your profile. Take the charity thing, Mawlid button, share it. Everybody has a finger, so how could anybody have a block? The block that people experience is they connect they feel nothing well because they're not doing anything. So when we do things that's what we said that uh, if, if we just connect and it's empty, it's like an empty zone like a closet, you don't feel anything. So this connection works when there's a nazar. So when we connect the other side has to be gazing upon us, unzur halana wa ishfalana. Allah asked everyone that, have Prophet to look upon you. So Prophet is looking and the awliya are coming and teaching us a shortcut that if you really want his nazar you have to do something. So Allah describes in Qur'an, don't go empty handed to see Sayyidina Muhammad so tariqat eats ada, right? If you're going to the presence of Prophet why are you going empty handed? That means put something in your hand and your hand is your deeds, your good actions. So you give something, do something, sponsor something and then you're asking for Prophet dua that, Ya Rasulul Kareem that bless this action. 
So we're the only charity that has notes. Every sadaqah put a note, Allah's witness, Prophet is witness and if I can get to all of them I'm, I'm witnessing. So we're all these eyes are looking at everything somebody does. That means this is the, the nazar so that when you feel and you're meditating it's no longer a closet because you know you did things, you know you're active, you know you're trying to participate. So then the other side is watching you and that's our whole lives. You know when, when we're trying to do the mawlid and spread the mawlid to thousands of people then when we connect who the nazar is there because all the deeds and all the actions we're hoping that this is gaining their support, gaining their happiness. That's why the shaykh has to teach from himself. If a shaykh doesn't do anything then how he can tell his students to do anything? So he doesn't tell them do anything and as a result all of them do nothing. Well that would be a, a, a no power, low power, nothing faith in action, nothing happening. So our way was from the example of how we were trained. Shaykh was active, 72 books written, running all over the earth doing this, doing that, doing this, doing that and that's how we were trained is, don't sit, do something. So with all of these opportunities, all these different websites, all of these things, these are a, a tremendous effort to, to do da'wah, to do propagation, to be of service. You know that if you've ever dealt with charities, don't think that you give to this other big organization something, something relief and say, oh no, they do very charitable deeds, they mashallah, they do 500 million dollars, they're doing here, here, here. But you know the danger of these organizations are they are big Wahhabi groups and if you see the pictures there's a guy without a hat handing out food and every village and every person they come in contact with their da'is, the people whom they send out to give this relief, their da'is, they do da'wah and they come into Ahlul Sunnah countries and Ahlul Sunnah poverty and they begin to say, Ahi you want this bag of rice? Say, yeah, yeah. What this on your neck? What's this thing? And they touch your chest. They do it on, on Umrah, they do it on Hajj, they do it in every village that they go. And they say, this is a big shirk ya akhi, this is why you, you don't have food, we're gonna give you this rice but take this shirk off, take this thing off, take… why you have this hat like this? Who told you wear this hat like this? Why you have a turban? This is who told you? That's why you don't get any rice, that's why you don't get any food, Allah, Allah punishing you. They make all sorts of garbage. So the, don't think that their deed is, is a charitable deed, they're trying to change the aqidah of people going out into the field because the people are hungry. And that's why I said, our da'wah is the same but we're all Sufi, all Naqshbandi. So our gentlemen and, and, and people are going out with their Naqshbandi appearance and they're talking to the people too. They no, no you have to do mawlid and see these awliya, ask for their madad and their support. Because they have to spread what they believe. So if you believe what we believe then that's all you think about. Don't think about other organizations and their Wahhabi philosophy and, oh yeah they give a lot of food out. Yeah they give a lot of food out at the price of taking people's aqidah away. And we've seen them operate in Canada and the same thing, they have fundraisers, they come and they talk about what's right and wrong and what the belief system is, they try to enter into every organization and every masjid. So that they can begin to infiltrate the belief system, oh you don't have to do mawlid, this is oh this is you know this may be questionable. They have the whole Wahhabi philosophy involved in their, in their programming and their projects and everything they're involved in. So this is a big effort, this is a big effort for the people whom the belief we have that these wells are being named by the names of our shaykhs. These banners for food and every activity is in the names of these Naqshbandi shaykhs. And Nasir is saying in India and going doing da'wah and, and uh, Tawfiq is doing his da'wah in Kenya and our people in Pakistan are doing uh, 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 who we have in, in Kenya, we have all the group in, in uh, Pakistan. So they're all doing their da'wah for tariqah. So we know how the system runs, so it's, it's just the other people don't understand what's going on. They think, oh they're just they're giving rice out and giving qurban, no it's at the price of people's belief that they're doing that. And that's a means in which to reach to those people and they're all da'is and they're specifically targeting to take away the aqeedah of Ahlul Sunnah with Jama mm. and the, the love and the ishq for Sayyidina Muhammad 
Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah While we love everything you teach, I don't feel strong enough to show I am Muslim. Why am I so weak and scared? How do I have more confidence in myself to be a Muslim openly? You don't have to 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 show it. You you just have to be it. Means that your belief is for yourself and between you and your Lord. So this is not a, a, a competition in which we have to show it. If, if you feel that it's, it's a, a danger, you have family that are not interested. There's so many different variables when we're teaching in the West and we're not trying to be confrontational with mixed families. But being a Muslim is one who submits their will to the will of Allah <coughs> So it's a matter of the submission and my relationship with Allah and the love for Sayyidina Muhammad It's not a competition on how much I can show it and, and expose myself to the world if that's not what Allah opened. Everybody to their limit. If Allah put somebody in a situation they can do everything, go everywhere and do everything like that then Allah gave them that ability. If Allah put into somebody to be confined under difficulty, under restrictions Allah knows the condition of His servant and He doesn't test them above and beyond that condition. So it's a matter of being patient, living under those conditions. But your Islam is your relationship with Allah it's not about putting it out there in front of the whole world because the whole world doesn't have to see anything anyways. So it's a very private relationship. Now if your question was, how come I can't submit? Because I don't want to pray and I don't want to do good deeds, well then that's a matter of meditating, contemplating, doing your salawats, go out and, and give some charity, go out and make a sandwich and give to people or make some, some food for people, go to a soup kitchen, volunteer. So, so many ways to be of service so that I can submit, I can pray more, I can meditate and I can do my practices. If I have to wait till everybody is gone for work, I'll do them by myself. So you find the time to do what you have to do and it's not a matter of having an audience of people and, and walking out in public and showing everyone because a good Muslim is one whom their deeds are strong so that their relationship and their practices, their meditation, their connection, their prayers, those are what's important for Allah not, not for everybody to see it and, and everybody in the family to be aggravated by it inshaAllah. Especially if it's a con family of converts and, and, and mixed relationships. Allah. As salaamu alaykum, Sayyidi. <coughs> How do we deal with the loneliness at times of Eid and other significant days when we don't have any in person Muslim friends or family to share the culture, story, or effort, efforts of our journey? Please forgive me. Yes, it's a common now and that, that's a sad part is that the Eid is a bit uh, difficult. There are, there are Eid programs at, uh, uh, in different communities and it's not like going to the masjid where everybody's going to bother you. If you find an Eid program in your, your area and it's at a park, it's basically just going to the, the, the communal prayer and hanging out at the park activities. It's not so much a time of being interrogated and you're following this, you're following that. So the Eid prayers you can pretty much find throughout the city in all major cities in America and in Canada. So it, it's, you know, if, if that's what the person is lacking then they try to find when is the next Eid prayer and the big one. So here they have one in Canada, in Vancouver down at a convention center. So if people want to just go there and feel like they're a part of, you know, a thousand people praying then that's, that's uh, acceptable. What they try to avoid is actually sitting in the different mas masjids in which somebody comes up to you and indoctrinates you and says, oh you're doing this wrong, why are you like this and you shouldn't follow a shaykh, you shouldn't follow tariqah. That's what you're trying to avoid when you sit and meditate and pray at home. But for the Eid they usually have pretty grand events which are safe to go to because it's thousand people and nobody's sort of caring for anything else. So they just go there, they do their Eid prayers, they have uh, 
uh, carnival or festival for the children. So inshaAllah that's uh, acceptable and that's what people do. InshaAllah Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamu ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basiri Surat al-Fatiha.